Thank you. Well, that's a great group here, huh? We got the wisdom table back here. So I got them when I first came in. They're either wine or wisdom. I'm trying to figure that one out. But if you and I need to visit afterward, I can help you with that wife thing. Get that straightened out. So you don't have to wear those shoes up here anymore. This speech took some turns now. Wow. And you're a little bigger than the West Stanley Rotary. West Stanley. I went to West Stanley. We had breakfast. Me and about ten other guys. It was good. There's been a lot, a lot of rotary clubs around Charlotte. Been, been fun two years. No football. Uh, but thanks for having us, Ellie. Thanks for uh, introducing us, having us. Uh, I, I do get a chance now uh, publicly to say something about a lady that's meant a lot to me uh, personally. I don't have this opportunity very often. Uh, but Miss Dale Halton is here, and uh, you cannot believe what she's meant to us as starting our football program in the building that I get to sit in every day uh, because of her. Uh, well, that's a, that's a huge part, Miss Dale. Thank you very much. I told her, I got a parking spot for her if they didn't give her one. She didn't park in mine. Uh, <laughs> no, I do, uh, I do have to start with, uh, I have been out of coaching two years. It was nice to be out there Saturday. I'm still undefeated. Um, so it was good to be back on the sideline, put a headset on. It's been two years, but uh, I had to tell, we had a referee incident on Saturday, so I, it made me think about referee stories. They're great stories. And, and uh, I was talking to Frank up here about Jerry McGee's, the president out of Wingate. And of course, he's an ACC official, and he's, he's retired now, but he always worked our games at Wake. And, he was always the field judge on our sideline, and what a great man. I mean, he just was so hard to get mad at. I mean, I wanted to get mad at him so many times, and I couldn't. But we're standing there one day, and we're in the game, and this wideout's running down the field, and I'm coaching the secondary. And, of course, they always call pass interference on the defense. They never call it on the offense. And so our DB's running in stride, and this wideout just pushing off. And we, we could have made the interception. And, I was like, Jerry, that's pass interference, man. He goes, nah, coach, that wasn't. I said, well, I'm going to tell you what. If the defensive guy had been doing it to the offensive guy, you would have thrown the flag on him. He goes, yeah, coach, you're probably right. I probably would have. I'm like, you're not supposed to tell me the truth. Just <laughs> lie to me or something. Of course, Ron Cherry is one of my favorite officials of all time. Ron's an ACC official and very vocal when he makes the call on the loudspeaker. And what a what a fine man he is. And, and, and he has a little deal that he will not listen to you during the game. He doesn't acknowledge you on the sideline. He just puts his hand up. He won't listen to you. I don't want to hear it, coach. He does that to you. So we're playing Clemson in Winston, and, and we, you know, they sub the punt team off of their sideline. We're not supposed to be able to deceive in college football, but it happens every down. Um, and so, and it's for us defense, you guys, really bad. So that's why we're doing it on offense now at UNC Charlotte. Uh, but so anyway, we're trying to get our punt return team out there. We have to take a timeout because it went too fast. The umpire's supposed to stand on the ball while you sub. And so he won't, he will not, he's giving me this. And I'm mad because he won't let us. We had to take a timeout. And so he's giving me that. Because then we have, goes to a TV timeout and he comes over. I said, Ron, look. I said, you got to give us time to sub. He goes, Coach. I gave you plenty of time. I was standing out there. I said, I'm going to tell you what, Ron. Standing out in the middle of the field, it might have seemed like you had plenty of time. But standing over here, we didn't have enough time. I'm just telling you, we did not have enough time to get these guys in the game. So, uh, And then Saturday, uh, we're, we're playing our little scrimmage game, and, and uh, they throw a flag on us. So I walk out there, and, and, and Tim's out there, and I'm like, well, what was the flag for? He goes, well, we threw a flag on your coaches. Well, you know, we hadn't been in the game in a couple of years, so we're a little anxious. We, we might have been on the field, but generally they give you a warning, like back up a little bit. Well, they did. The Southern Conference officials were going to use them next year. And, and so I'm looking at them like, well, don't we get a warning? And he goes, Coach, they changed that rule two years ago. I said, well, I've been out of coaching two years. You should tell me that. I mean, come on. I mean, you got to let me know. I get the question a lot. Uh, you know, how do you, how do you function in a business that's so public and you're criticized for, you know, we say on offense and defense as a coordinator, you get about 25 seconds to make 75 calls in a game and usually everybody disagrees with them, you know, so you, you're pretty, it's a pretty public business we live in, we get a lot of critics, but uh, speaking of wives, my wife Angie, I love her to death, she's <laughs> the biggest critic I have. Uh, one year, it was 2006, I think, or no, no, seven, I think it was 2007. And we're sitting in that range of two and four, three and three, you know, not sure if we're gonna make a bowl game. Well, 
it's in our contracts. You know, if we go to a bowl game, we get a little a little bump at the end of the year. We get a little money and everything's good. And so I come home one night on a Tuesday and she's like, she's like, Brad, she goes, I, I don't know what y'all are doing over there. I don't really intend to get in your business, but you need to know I've already spent the bowl bonus. So whatever you do, you need to get going. I don't know what you need to tell them, but. So we get it at home too. So it's just part of the business. Um, and then the other thing that is kind of unique about our business is, you know, we got, 85, 95, something like that, 18, 19, 20, 21 year olds running around and like how do you live in that world and everything's dependent upon them and you know you do the best you can in recruiting and you try and get the best guys you get but you never know. I mean you just never know what, what ultimately ends up on campus and, and so we have this rule in the NCA where it's called occasional meal rule and it's a beautiful rule. It's one of the great rules we have. we got a lot of bad rules. We're trying to get some out but uh, you can bring the kids over to your house, and, and I make our coaches do it. We did it at, at Wake all the time, where they come over and play volleyball in the backyard. And, well, Coach Mullins, our quarterback coach, in another school he was at, and another kid that he was coaching that will remain a, uh, nameless, uh, came to the house and playing basketball in the driveway. Well, quarterbacks don't get three or four. And so they're out there shooting baskets. Well, the neighbors got this huge dog, this huge Rottweiler, right? And so this dog is coming toward him, and my man is nervous. He's like really nervous about his dog. He doesn't like animals. He, he's like, coach, he goes, he's like, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. They got an invisible fence. Don't even, don't even worry about it. So it's okay. And he's still looking. He's watching this dog and he's watching this dog. And he goes, he goes, I'm telling you, they got an invisible fence. Don't worry about it. He goes, well, well, coach, can the dog see the fence? <laughs> he's so, you never know. I mean, just. <laughs> part of it uh, hopefully hopefully I do we've been at several events over the last two years this is probably 200 I don't know somewhere we quit counting at 130 uh, different events around the city in the area uh, and what I decided to do was bring our facilities to you I always invite people to campus and some of you have been to campus and know what we're building and, and what the university is all about but just from an athletic standpoint I did I uh, want to show you hopefully this will work this is this is our stadium uh, and we just opened it October 31st uh, started in 2011 that was all an intramural field when I took the job uh, and it's just a, a phenomenal facility for us we, we had our first practice in there October 31st uh, last fall this is what it looked like prior to that it was our intramural field and we set the stadium right in there the architects Jenkins Pier Rogers Builders by the way, Rogers Builders is maybe as easy a group I've ever had to deal with. What a classy organization, uh, really good people, and, and put up with me changing walls and moving this wall, and I got here just in time to change stuff. Um, and Dan, the lead architect, told me one day, he goes, Coach, he goes, really, the building, you'll see the, the building in the end zone is, is a rectangular building. He goes, Coach, he goes, you can keep asking all this. He goes, I can make this build round if that's building round if you want it, but you don't have enough money, so quit asking. <laughs> so that's a picture of it from an aerial shot. A lot of fun to get to design the field. We are on artificial turf. Uh, it's kind of the move uh, in college football. We have two grass fields you can see at the top, 15,300 capacity. Uh, it's really convenient for our players and coaches. Uh, this is kind of a different field level look at it. Uh, you can see uh, the Duke building in the background. That's an engineering building. That's the favorite thing for me is when we walk out on the field from the tunnel is the setting. Uh, it's an academic setting. It really is a beautiful setting. And it was a lot of fun for us Saturday to have 13,000 out there, that's for sure. Uh, this is the different angle off the building. This is the interior of the building. Uh, the, the orange area to the left that's our academic center. We have an academic center in the building for all athletes. Uh, coach's office is on the right. Go ahead. In the basement, top right, that's our weight room. Uh, top left is our training room. Uh, that's our locker room at the, the bottom left. Uh, visitor's locker room is kind of in the blue there. Go ahead. Uh, this is our locker room on the inside. Uh, you know, our equipment room, storage, laundry. They get all their laundry done. That's nice of us to do their laundry for them. Locker room turned out nice. Go ahead. Uh, training room, uh, we've got indoor water, uh, trip, things like that for rehab, uh, taping, different things. Go ahead. This is probably the room I'm most excited about. It's our weight room. 
uh, we get a chance to train our guys in there. And they didn't design this room. They left that up to me. And, and so I hired a guy that, to help me do it. Our strength coach helped us do that. Uh, so I think, I think that might be it. Oh, no, we got it. This is uh, during the, this was actually fall pictures from the spring uh, scrimmage in the fall when we, we scrimmaged in the stadium. Uh, so it, it's, it just gives you a feel for what we're building out there and what we've got. Uh, and that building really is Dale, Miss Dale. It's called the Judy W. Rose Football Center, but we were trying to put Judy, I mean, Dale's name on it. And she surprised everybody and put Judy's name on it. So that was pretty cool. Uh, so that's kind of where we are. Uh, Facility-wise, what we have to offer, and there's a lot of, a lot of new buildings on campus, a lot of construction in the last 10 years, and the master plan through 2017-2018 is uh, really exciting for us. Uh, from a recruiting standpoint, we have one class on campus that we're practicing with. We signed the class in February, and we'll bring them in this summer, and then we'll continue to recruit uh, from that standpoint. Kind of our recruiting philosophy, uh, you know, we start with the guys character. Uh, we just rely on the, the people in the school. Uh, one of our huge benefits in football is we don't have to deal with AAU coaches or club coaches or anything like that. So we, we still rely on a high school coach, counselors, principals, assistant principals. Uh, and you can ask a lot of questions, and our guys are pretty intentional about that. Usually you have a character miss when you don't ask. You just look at his 40 time and his film and say, yeah, we'll take him. Uh, you don't ask a lot of questions, so we have to be pretty intentional about that. And then we take their transcript and say, does this guy have the base to succeed here academically and graduate? Uh, you don't have to be number one in your class, but you have to have a good academic base so we know that you can succeed academically. And then we take the film and look at it and say, hey, can this guy now get us to a bowl game? Uh, that's the big change for us in recruiting was when we made uh, the move to Conference USA. Uh, we made that decision. Now, mind you, all this facility plan was based on a 1AA plan uh, when I took the job, Conference USA came calling. Uh, our leadership with Judy Rose and Chancellor DeBois made the decision to, uh, you know, move forward and, and go to that next level and, and compete at, at the highest level, which will open some doors for us. Recruiting it already has uh, been a huge benefit for us because kids know in 15 they're going to play a different schedule. Uh, speaking of scheduling, we've got our schedule finished for 13 and 14. Uh, we'll be an independent 1AA football team. We'll make the transition. We'll go into this fall with 57 scholarship players. We're going to 2014 with 75 scholarship players. And then we're going to 2015 with 85, which is the limit. Uh, and then that's all uh, to, to meet FBS requirements. You have to you know, have scheduling issues. You have to have scholarship numbers. Those are things, attendance numbers, that, that we have to attain. Uh, and then in 15, uh, we've got a Conference USA schedule. The biggest challenge for us was you have to play five home games against the FBS teams. So we had to find somebody to come play us, and we found Temple. We'll do a home and home at Temple in 15. They'll come here, then in 16, we'll go to Philadelphia and play them. Uh, we're going to, we've got an SEC school. I can't really say it right now. We've got a contract signed with an SEC school. We'll play in 15 on the road. Uh, and then Presbyterian will come here and we'll play a home and home with Georgia State who's moving to the Sunbelt Conference, which I think is a series that we need to play uh, between Atlanta and Charlotte. And so we'll try to continue that series with Georgia State. We'll go there in 15, they'll come back to us in 17. Uh, so that was a huge piece that changed for us with scheduling and we had to take some games off and, and put some on. But uh, that's kind of where we are with Conference USA and our scheduling and uh, things like that. Uh, a little bit about my timeline personally. Uh, as I said, I was at, at Wake Forest University 10 years, five years prior to that at the University of Georgia. Six years prior to that, I was at uh, Marshall University, met my wife there. Uh, and so we have three beautiful children. Uh, but th that's all, uh, you know, changing jobs and all that. We, we're a little bit like we were at Wake Forest. We had an identity crisis. And for two years, we've been out spreading the brand. Uh, so. You know, we left Georgia. I got fired at the University of Georgia. We won nine games, and we averaged nine wins a year and won four straight bowl games, but they still ran us off. It wasn't enough. So, so I got this job at Wake Forest where, you know, the first spring I was out, and my wife said, what are you doing? I said, I'm just spreading the good news that Wake Forest plays football. Nobody <laughs> you know, they knew we played at Wake, so we had an identity crisis, and we won a lot of games, won the ACC championship in 06 and in 08. Uh, we played the Eagle Bank Bowl, beat the Naval Academy, and 
had four, we had a first round draft pick, two fourth round draft picks. I mean, we had four guys drafted off our defense. We, we thought we were pretty good. We arrived and we were driving home after the game back to West Virginia to my in-laws. And we didn't eat after the game. We left D.C. and drove straight to West Virginia. I told Andrew I didn't get a heat. So I said, look, we're pulling off at the next exit. I don't care what it is, we're eating. And so we pull off. There's a McDonald's there. Of course, we walk in. We just left the game. So everybody's got their WF stuff on. And some of it says Wake Forest. And I walked in and ordered just need a quarter pound or something. And, and the lady goes, man, you almost be some big wrestling fans. <laughs> I said, yes, ma'am. They just had a big event over in D.C. We're just trying to get home. And they get my quarter pound. <laughs> so we, we struggle with that a little bit at Wake. Uh, you know, we do the same thing here. Went to the McDonald's right across from campus after the game, after the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl was on Sunday, and of course the 49ers played in the Super Bowl, and so I pulled into McDonald's, and it's not a plug for McDonald's by any stretch, but uh, I had my green shirt on, I had 49ers on it, and the lady's like, I'm giving her my money, she's like, man, did you see that game last night? I was like, yes, ma'am, and she's like, I can't believe they came all the way back, they didn't win it. She goes, I guess you're a 49ers man. I said, yes, ma'am, I am. <laughs> I'm right across the street from the stadium. So we're just, uh, we're just trying to spread the word, get out as much as we can. Uh, that's part of the process. Uh, I made one huge mistake when I first took the job. I, I put our logo on with the CPIC 49ers and was pretty good in North Carolina. Everybody pretty much knew who we were. We go into high schools and things like that. But we went to the state of Georgia and the state of South Carolina. Some people didn't know who we were. And so now we put Charlotte on things and, and just little things like that. We're just out spreading the brand and trying to, to, to do that. And that's part of the process. And it's part of, of starting football and letting people know who we are. Um, but really the core of who we are, what are, what are we really about? Uh, uh, our core values, uh, we talk to our guys all the time, is, is our two core values are humility and toughness. I mean, um, what you guys are doing, being Rotarians, I mean, you, you, it's a cause beyond yourself. Every man, I believe every man needs a cause beyond himself, and then, and then really it boils down to relationships. You know, what kind of dad are you? What kind of husband are you? What kind of brother are you? So that's kind of where we are. The other day in the team meeting, um, you know, Martin Richard died in the, in the bombing and hit all of us kind of hard. And, hit me specifically hard because I've got an eight year old at home and took the team, set him down, put his picture up on the, on the screen. And I put my eight year old's picture right beside it. You know, we had this saying at, at UNC Charlotte with our team, you know, it's the attack the day, attack the day, attack today. Just, just go after this one today, guys, because I know it's our promise tomorrow. And so I told the guys, I said, this, this was on like a Wednesday in the team meeting on Tuesday night, guys, I'm in my backyard it's dark and my eight-year-old will not let us go in the house because he just wants to be Alan Barnwell, our tailback, one more time. And that's why I told our team, I'm like, look, this eight-year-old right here just wants to be you. You have a, you have a huge responsibility here. And, and you know, you, you, it's, it's a tough job for us in today's world of Facebook, Twitter, iPhones, iPads, everything tells me, you know, look at me, it's all about me. So that's what I love about football. We're so dependent on each other. So humility is something that we preach all the time. And I tell this story a lot. We had a chance to coach Aaron Curry at Wake Forest University. And he won the Buckus Award, which for a lot of us in this room, Dick Buckus was the greatest linebacker to ever play the game. And so he got, came to campus and I got a chance to meet him. We were worried that Aaron wouldn't know who he, who he is, you know, like, it's all about Ray Lewis now, so we're like, you think he'll know who he is? Well, sure enough, he did, but Aaron, Aaron was a guy that was drafted fourth overall in the NFL draft. He ran the fastest 40 time at the combine for any linebacker. Would. They had another guy stood right next to him named Stanley Arnoux. And Stanley ran the second fastest 40 time at the, at the combine, so we were pretty good at linebacker. We had a little crew. Uh, it was easy for me, but uh, Stanley was the guy that never said a word. He showed up and worked every day. Aaron was the guy that just, you couldn't, you just, I was always pulling him back. He just talked all the time. But they both approached the game the same way. They played so hard. So I'm standing in there, Mr. Buckus, they give Aaron the award, and I kind of look back in the corner, and Stanley's back there. Now, I've said the definition, I, I, I believe the best definition of humility is when you want to see an equal or your superior elevated. That's the, when, you're, when you're truly happy about 
your boss, like if, if Judy's the athletic director of the year, that's why, that's why I come to work every day. You know what I mean? Make her, she needs to be athletic director. You know, we're doing such a good job. Well, Stan's in the back and he's bawling. He's absolutely crying because his best friend just won the Buckus Award, the best linebacker in America. Now that's the definition of humility. And so we got to live that out. We try to preset to our guys all the time. Uh, so I, I tell that story about those two guys. And then, and then like I say, our other core belief is toughness. You know, we, we, we play a tough game. There are hard days in our game. You know, you're getting up at six and it's a rough game. And we saw a lot of guys fall off of our team that thought they wanted to play and, you know, walk on and come, uh, cause this is, I'm good, I'm just gonna go to class. So they haven't stayed with us, but we preach that a lot, mental toughness and physical toughness. We wanna be one of the toughest football teams to, to play the game. So that's kind of who we are uh, and how we, how we talk to our guys and how we teach our guys that, you know, it's really not about you, it's about our team and our university. And, and I tell them all the time, we just wanna be like the engineering school or like the English department. We just, we just wanna be first class like them. And so that's that's our goal every day when we show up. Uh, but with that being said, uh, uh, open up for any questions. Anybody's got any questions? Uh, appreciate you having us out. Um, this is the biggest Rotary Club I've been to by far, <laughs> and the best. Say again. What did you learn about your team this week? Well, the biggest thing is we've executed really well under pressure. For the first time, we had a lot of people watching us. And I've said it several times, for me personally, I'm real involved in the kicking game. And kickers never have that pressure in practice. And so it was a good chance to see them have to execute. Uh, our quarterback, Matt Johnson, ended up 13, 13 out of 14. Uh, and so I was really, really pleased with our execution with finally some, some outside pressure on them, people watching. We weren't playing somebody else, but it was, a, it was the number one thing I learned about our, our group. And, was really important for our specialists to have to snap the ball and hold the ball and kick it. I mean, those are, it's easy in practice, hard to do when a lot of people are watching you. So uh, that's probably the number one thing I learned. You have the first play of the season, next season, drawn up already? Yeah, but I can't tell you the next year. <laughs> Campbell, Campbell's in the house somewhere. Where is he? There we go. I knew they were here. I, I was at scrimmage, I wanted to congratulate you on your wide margin of victory. Yes, right. Uh, I got on the offensive coordinator for the white team, though. We only scored three on the white team. What's up with that? That was not the white team. <laughs> uh, it was a beautiful occasion, fabulous facility. Congratulations. I was wondering what it's like to recruit players into a new program. I mean, how do you get, how do you compete with this guy? Yeah, well, he's, he's asking how do you recruit to a program that's never played and it's a new program. And it was, a, it was tough. Uh, but as I said in my opening press conference back in March of 11, the one thing they knew for sure is they were going to have a chance to play. And that's important to kids that they'll have a chance to play because they have any other but the One of the fun things for me was when we signed a kid, he would be like, hey, coach, can I have number four? I'd be like, yeah, let me, yeah, you can four. <laughs> that was easy. Uh, but we did, we were targeting uh, risk takers, no question. Uh, our coaching staff in the same manner. I was asking some coaches to come be with us and be out of the game for a couple of years. So uh, we did, we did, you know, target risk takers and guys that would were willing. But the thing that won out at the end of the day was there's a lot of power in being first. And when they're in that first team picture next August, that's going to carry some value. And and we we ran across that in recruiting a lot. And we 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 preached that a lot. You know, there's a lot of power in being first. And that was probably the number one thing. And, Really pleased with the group as they came out. So, you mentioned that part of your job is getting.